What do you think of Greek life? It's stupid. I think it's great to have organizations where you can get together with a bunch of friends and, and make friends. I think it's kind of dumb that you have to pay to have friends. I have some friends that are in it and it seems like they have a lot of fun. It's kind of toxic and very heterosexual. Um, very white based yeah. normally. I feel like here at AU it's a lot more of a friendly um, environment. Greek life is a big part of my, my parents' life and also my siblings' lives. So. I mean, to them, it's just an organization that they were able to make really good friends from. First semester, it was like not very much. And now second semester, I feel like they're everywhere. And I'm like, oh my god, why is everyone I know a sorority girl or rushing a frat? Like, this is not what I signed up for. I kind of have a complicated history with Greek life or a complicated opinion about Greek life. For me, Greek life has always been like an institution that I associate with whiteness. But recently, I don't know, I think I'm kind of interested in like the whole legacy aspect, especially because I've been seeing a lot of like D9, like Divine 9. To some degree, I can understand their sense of community. So I don't, I don't know, I think I'm just like mystified by Greek life. Greek life at American University began in the 1920s. The campus's first fraternity, known as the Jesters Club, formed at the school in 1927. More chapters followed, including Alpha Chi and the Swagger Club in 1928, and Phi Beta Zeta in 1933. Today, AU is home to 18 social and 8 cultural fraternities and sororities. The school also houses various academic, professional, and service chapters. While all of these groups often fall under the same Greek life umbrella, they have some key differences. Social Greek life at AU has seen instances of controversy. AU's former chapter of Alpha Tau Omega, also known as Epsilon Iota, lost university recognition in 2001 after a series of hazing incidents and alcohol violations. However, the group continued to operate as an underground fraternity. The school warned students to avoid the group in 2003, and the Interfraternity Council once again called to disband the group in 2006. Despite this, the unofficial frat persisted. For a few more years, the group flew under the radar, minus some calls of public disturbances by neighbors of the unofficial frat house. The group came back into public light in 2014, however, after two members of the group were involved in an alleged assault against another AU student. The Epsilon Iota members and one other assailant were accused of attempting to run the student over with their car. After exiting the vehicle, the group is said to have verbally assaulted the student while kicking him in the head 20 to 30 times, resulting in a severe concussion and spinal sprain. Shortly after, over 70 pages of emails, texts, and messages sent between Epsilon Iota members are leaked to the AU community. These messages, detailing racist, sexist, homophobic, and other words of hateful rhetoric, became an issue of national attention. Two years later, in the summer of 2016, the university begins changing the code of conduct to target the unrecognized fraternity. Finally, in 2017, 16 years after the frat's initial disbandment, AU expels 18 students associated with Epsilon Iota. Epsilon Iota is not the only social Greek life chapter to face historical issues on AU's campus. In 2020, reports of AU students disaffiliating from social Greek life over racism, sexual assault, and other instances of hate began circulating. These followed nationwide and campus trends calling for the abolishment of Greek life. It kind of started um, me, Parthav, and then two of our other co-founders were really good friends. We had all kind of had that same experience with Greek life of like, oh, maybe this is something that I would want to join. AU does very little to produce communities, and like because the administration does so little to address that problem, Greek life becomes this alternative that people are drawn to because they see it as an opportunity to build community. But then hearing about like a lot of the racism, sexism, misogyny, homophobia um, that's part of like the wider Abolish Greek Life movement, we were like, wow, we really realized that Greek life kind of supports a system and structures of oppression and that's not something that we really want to be involved in and also not something that we felt like matched the values of AU. A big part of what we ended up seeking to do was, you know, bring those conversations back into the fold because they had really been neglected for a while. If you weren't at AU when something happened, you like have no idea about it. So there were also people who were getting in touch with us about stories that had happened at AU like five, ten years ago that we had never heard of. I think that we very much had the same goals as the previous movement, but I think we also tried to present maybe like the framing a little bit differently. You know, there were a lot of these misunderstandings about what Abolish Greek Life meant for 
minority Greek life. We didn't want this to be, you know, something that was misconstrued as opposition to that when it was really in opposition to, you know, the white supremacist framework of Greek life to begin with. Primarily with abolished Greek life, it was like, we want to form something where we can advocate for the abolition of Greek life, but also provide an alternative, like, social scene and sense of community. Um, and then thirdly, also place to document people's experiences with Greek life. So people who are coming in as freshmen can look and see and hear about things that happened four or five, ten years ago. And really also just encouraging people to think critically about their involvement in systems of oppression. And for us, Greek life was a big one. We had a lot of people who were like super supportive. And then of course, obviously, there's a lot of people on campus who are involved in Greek life and we're not super supportive. I think like the general like rhetoric that was used was, oh, none of these people have been involved in Greek life. And our response to that was always like, we are members of groups that are generally hurt by Greek life. And like, we've seen people we know be hurt by Greek life. And I don't think that it's necessary to be part of Greek life to understand the harm. During the referendum, <clears throat> that was probably the biggest time that people were talking about it. The referendum um, was probably our like, biggest thing that we did, um, we were like, okay, we're getting people to talk about Greek life and the harm that it causes. And so we realized like we were gonna have to work with student government. We were for them to get a referendum firstly on the ballot. And then once we knew that it was gonna be on the ballot, we kind of started campaigning. And so we were just trying to make sure that everyone really understood the reasons why we wanted to abolish Greek life. This was the first time since like 2017, 2018, something like that, that Greek life had been on an AUSG referendum because every time that it's requested, AU Campus Life just unilaterally slashes it from the ballot. Because AUSG can be overridden by AU Campus Life at any point. It doesn't really have any real powers. There were a lot of outside forces that kind of support Greek life. So a lot of people who are in Greek life have a much like stronger sense of school pride. Um, and those people are donors. The administration is unwilling to do anything. You know, Greek life makes them a lot of money. We wanted to become a club from like our first inception. As a club, you can rent rooms and you get access to funding that we could have used and we were not allowed to be a club at all. They told us because a Greek life is an official part of campus life, you can't advocate for removing it. But at the same time, AU markets Greek life as a student organization. If Greek life is part of the administration, then every time we have a sexual assault case, isn't that on the campus? So then why is it that it's a student organization when it's convenient for the university to say it's a student organization? I think that was probably our biggest hurdle in like not being able to get Greek life genuinely abolished. For me, it felt like we're students who are trying to bring to your attention these concrete harms and violence and abuse that goes on in these organizations and you're just simply not even interested in talking to us. It is unofficially like AU trying to prevent like these discussions of things that it opposes. You know, you're in AUX1 and 2 and you're in your classes and everyone's telling you to be a change maker and recognize systems of oppression. When we actually tried to do something about a system that we felt was oppressive, we were kind of like super strong. Based off the referendum, the average AU student does not want Greek life on campus. That being said, I like, I don't know how much of that was based off the fact that that was something that was actively present in their minds. This is a little bit of an indictment about the AU student body, but I generally think that a lot of AU students tend to be very performative. The amount of AU students who are willing to start a conversation is a lot fewer than the number of AU students willing to jump into a conversation. We wanted people to get involved and help us organize these things, but ultimately no one was like, you know, willing to actually do that. We never wanted this to just be an account, especially an account that ended up fizzling out the way that it did. I think in short, it was just, it was a lot of work. People were abroad or people left. So that part was difficult to kind of like manage it all on our own. People who wanted to get involved really like only wanted to work on the Instagram and that like in the sense that they would want to repost things. But then when it came to planning protests or our planning posts and all of the stuff that we were doing on that end, like we were lacking participation. I'm definitely like proud of what we got done. Um, I think we started a lot of really important conversations. Unless there are students who are willing to start these conversations again, then people are not going to talk about it. And that's a really unfortunate thing because I think it's really important that, you know, students at this university do take a more active stance in talking about the issues. Two years after the referendum and the most recent movement to abolish campus Greek life, AWOL asked, where are we now? 
The most recent citations listed on AU's website were reported in 2022, carrying over probations into 2023. These include violations of disorderly conduct or the rights of others, the good neighbor policy, and failure to comply with officials. However, when asked about the presence of Greek life on campus, internal communications sent AWOL the following statement. So, where are we now? So, I, our, our numbers have gone up slightly. Um, you know, not like it's not like they've doubled or they've gone up dramatically. But I do think that the attitude towards Greek life has shifted, which I think is really positive. We represent almost twenty percent of campus, and I think that the you know the the previous like sort of like shunning and like shaming of people for joining a specific organization, I think that was really negative. I think we're past that. How we went from like having fraternity houses on campus to like two years ago wanting to abolish Greek life and as a whole to now kind of the shift of like more people being accepting of it. I think that it's really good that we are sort of accepted as members of the AU community because we all are. Universities go through phases of peak interest on certain issues and topics based according to what the students are interested in at that moment in time. Um, so I'm curious to see what like the whole conversation is like two years from now. There was a time where like you didn't wear letters on campus because mm -hmm. you would like you know get looks or even like mm -hmm. get like heckled while you were walking. Mm -hmm. And that's like that's a little ridiculous, right? It's just I guess a nuanced topic that doesn't have like a homogenous perspective. I knew I wanted to rush a frat when I first came to AU. I like had the idea and I was like, oh, that would be kind of funny as a trans man and also like it kind of felt I was like, oh, I'm in college, I'm a man, like that's what I should do. It's been great, yeah. I think it's probably the best decision I've made uh, in my college career. I think that it's given me a community that I know a lot of people at AU struggle to find. College is often a daunting experience for a lot of people to navigate. Um, it's hard to make friends sometimes. I think Greek life provides that opportunity, especially when thinking about like cultural organizations or the D9 within a PWI, um, having like Latino organizations or like historically black sororities and fraternities definitely provides a safe space for students. Because you're spending so much time with these people when you're pledging, you're like doing all these bonding activities, it's it's hard not to get super close to them. I think there's like a stability aspect, right? Like when you join a fraternity, you know that you have like something for all four years of college. Beyond that too, you have something for the rest of your life. The alumni networks and the connections and the friends that you make in your fraternities last a lot longer than graduation. We went on a retreat and like jumped in a lake together and before I got top surgery and like one of my friends lent me his shirt so I could like jump in with it. Like they've just been like super accommodating and supportive. I think being able to sort of like go home to your people is something that's like really valuable. There've been like life-changing conversations I've had with these people and like people I know will be in my life for a long time and I like wouldn't have met them otherwise. I think in some other clubs it's like you walk into the club and you see oh everyone's already friends and like I'm like this new guy like you know I'm not breaking into this established friend group. We do have like membership requirements and we do like choose who gets to join but we also give everyone an opportunity and like a fair shot. My frat has like uh, been a place where I could like express healthy male emotion and that like really surprised me. I thought it would be like sports and drinking and instead it's like emotional support <laughs> and studying. <laughs> I think in general something that AU faces is like siloed communities. Something that I would like to strive towards is definitely uniting student organizations together, uniting Greek life together, and then uniting student organizations and Greek life together to try to promote like a more campus-wide community. Trying to, I guess you could say, join the traditional fraternities was a little deterring for me because I just felt like I wouldn't be able to connect with the members of those organizations. I feel like that brotherhood that I would create wouldn't be as thorough or in-depth 
as it would be with people that I share similar identities or backgrounds with. Starting the process of bringing on a Latino organization on campus uh, is definitely new. There hasn't been one before. There's only been Latina ones. The amount of support I received was a lot more than I would have thought. He was motivated to start a chapter at AU, so he came back. He shared with me his aspiration to like start a chapter here. So I was like, I would really love to join you know, your process in bringing it to AU. What I think is special about our fraternity is that we are focusing on Latin culture, right? And then within our philanthropy and everything, uh, we would hope to cater more towards like the Latin male perspective of things and maybe even like the mental health aspect of things. I would say we're off to like a really good start and I think it's a good indicator of like what it will look like for next year and then future years to come. I'm excited to see the future of Greek life at AU as well, um, and how Lambda Theta Phi Lambda Fraternity Incorporated, specifically uh, girls within AU. So the culture of like different organizations in Greek life is always shifting. AU looks different than it did four years ago, and so Greek life looks different than it did four years ago. I think that because of like those positive aspects of Greek life that I really care about, I want to make sure that you know the school and like the council that's like overseeing is, is really doing their job well. There's definitely a lot of room for growth. I just want to be part of that. There's not like a very strict like power dynamic, which I appreciate. And I know there are like other accepting frats at AU, but also like I have been in class with like very fratty guys who I like know are in frats and they're saying interesting things about like women. And I'm like, huh, like that wouldn't fly with us. <laughs> when you're in a fraternity, Everywhere you go, you're in the fraternity. You know, if you're wearing letters on campus, or even if you're not, like you represent like a group of people. It's super important to like keep people accountable and like try not to have like these secrets about what's going on. But also, I wish some people would be more open to Greek life and like could see it as a positive group that can build people up and not tear them down. I think if I was to start a college Greek life today, I would have um, maybe recognized more the like interpersonal aspect of it. If you have concerns about like Greek life's culture, I really encourage you to like come talk to us. Like I think that a lot of us are willing to like answer the hard questions. I definitely viewed it as like we're on our side trying to do this and all these people are on this other side. And there were times we were interested in dialoguing with people who are in Greek life or um, Greek life institutions. The sororities and fraternities said that they wouldn't go if we were there, um, so we did try. If you're someone who's had negative thoughts about Greek life before, if you see me on campus, totally okay to stop me. Or just like talk to someone you know in Greek life. And if you don't know anyone in Greek life, maybe you should meet someone in it. Everybody has their own experiences and that talking with people from a place of empathy and care can kind of get you further than just like, you're not supporting what I'm supporting, we're never gonna agree on anything, I don't even wanna talk to you. My hope for like, you know, students who are still at AU, will be at AU, is to like, really advocate for it and not let it die down. The past two years, obviously, like this has not been something that's been talked about like much, if at all. And like, I really do hope that people will talk about Greek life again on campus because it's not like these harms have gone away. We are a valuable member of this community already. I think that we show up, you know, we're involved on campus. We're just more involved by nature of being in one of the FSL organizations. So I, I mean that, yeah, like we're here and we're, we're growing. I think especially because we were, you know, unsuccessful with what we did, I think a lot of what I've realized is like, you need everyone to like be willing to chip in. And like, I think everyone who is, knows that they want to get rid of, they don't like Greek life on campus, they want to get rid of Greek life on campus. They should know that they're not the only one. And like, even just by like willing to talk about it, they will find those other people and they can like create a lasting movement that isn't just for people with an Instagram account. There's nothing like concretely that I know of that's happening, um, but I'm sure like the next time there is a, a scandal or something gets reported on, um, I'm sure the conversation will start back up again.